today we're going to be talking to the brother sister dynamic duo of Shipra and Dr. O'Neill. So today, Shipra, Dr. O'Neill, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Trevor. It's absolutely a pleasure to be with you. Please don't be so formal. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> so, Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Speaking of being formal, uh, please tell me, which one is the most serious one? Him. You look at his face. Uh, he's pointing at you. No, I, I'm, I always have a smile on the face. He doesn't. I smile from inside, yeah. not you from the face. Yeah, I, you smile from the eyes. Every time I see you, I feel more calm. Every time I see here, I get a little bit worked up. Are you serious? <laughs> no. I think people tell me always that I bring that happiness in the room, you know. It's like, That's true. But so does he. So does he. The next controversial question I have for both of you is, what do you dislike about Shipra? <laughs> oh. Okay. So many things. <laughs> The first thing is uh, like she she is very much expressive and she cares a lot for everybody and she expresses that and that's the part I lack behind. So I am very much jealous of that. Everybody likes her. She is more famous and uh, she is more uh, likable and uh, I don't know how she did it and how she is doing it. But it is not after uh, QNET. She is like that from the childhood only. She was the more bubbly one and uh, that was her nickname also. I don't think so. <laughs> I can tell that name. Nickname was? Bulbul. Bul. Oh, God. Bulbul Bul means a bird which keeps chirping, chirping, chirping all the time. <laughs> so that's the nickname. Yeah. It comes from the bubbly. So that's the part I, I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> and and for you, Shipra? Um, okay. I think... To be honest, I think I love him too much and I'm not trying to be good here, but I think I love him really too much and I've realized it recently that I love him too much to not like him. But there are a lot of things which I uh, get very... Uh, irritated. Yeah, irritated is when, uh, you know, he's too serious. He doesn't express. It's, it's actually the vice versa. He doesn't express. I know he has immense love, but he doesn't know how to express. And so, so many times I try, he doesn't hug, you know this. And you know this better than anybody else understand. I'm a very huggy person. I'm a very <laughs> physical person. So I'll go hug people. And my own brother doesn't hug me. So I have to like hold his hand, catch him and show him. But he's, he doesn't express. So you're the hugging ambassador as well. You're hugging on his behalf Absolutely. for others. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, who was your parents' favorite? Um, I think we, in that case, honestly, I think they have moments when they're his and the moments his. But... But I'll be honest, I'm sh telling you, my parents love him more. No, no, I don't think so. I, I, uh, I really think so. Because uh, she has tried a lot to change this. <laughs> <laughs> she, she do too many things which I am unable to do. And especially the expression part. It's very hard for me to say I love you. I have never said to this to anyone. Yeah. Apart from that, when I am forced to do so. To your wife? Uh, excuse me, what? Have you said to wife? Yeah. Okay. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> so, I think the, our parents love uh, both of us equally. There are the darker side of the both of us. And uh, for that, I think they hate us. But uh, both of us cover each other yeah. back when required. Yeah, I think yeah. that is the best part when it comes to parents. We cover each other. We really do that. And so, who is the older one in the family here? Him. Uh -huh. Not in the business. Him. Him. <laughs> in terms of you are asking looks first, no? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he is the older man. He's two years elder to me. Two years. Two point two five. Two point two five. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what was that like being the uh, the elder, the older brother? Were you protective, or you just let her do whatever she wanted to do? Or? Whatever it was, Trevor. It was only till two thousand twelve. Till the time I didn't sign up, and after I signed up, the things changed. What changed? I don't know the, you can say the elder one changed. He became the baby or what? She, she <laughs> became the elder one. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, because so, I'm the upline. What did that look like when you had the older brother becoming the, the baby brother? No, it was never. For me, he's always been my big brother. So I look up to him. I talk to him. I ask him. Uh, I consult him if I can say precisely. But mm. uh, in some ways, it was very tough. 
because i have to play a role of a younger sister mm. but at the same time i have to play a role of an upline because that's how it is expected out of us in the in, in front of down lines in front of company in front of every place there are places i can't take him i would love to take him because he's my brother and he's my elder brother but i can't take him because he's my down line so it was a very tough managing job and yes i had to wear different pants at different places you know in order to manage our relationship right and we went through a lot of lot of storms i would say lots and uh, to manage this relationship of being brother and sister and being upline and downline and actually it's difficult being an elder brother and uh, listening to a younger sister as it upline at many places uh, like uh, she asked me to do something and i said not possible <laughs> but that time the brother comes out yeah. right but immediately i realized oh i am a downline also so it was hard to manage and uh, difficult to manage that perception actually not manager managing but uh, perception management but later on it's it, it's a journey and i feel over a period of uh, 10 years now into this journey yeah. uh, we have evolved in our relationship part and uh, i think it's a it's an experience and everybody who is uh, into same kind of relationship like a uh, husband downline wife upline or yeah. uh, sister is the upline the younger one and the downline is the brother mm. they have to go through this journey then only they can understand the beauty of it and and so growing up i mean being the the downline of of your sister of your younger sister that requires a tremendous amount of humility i would right. assume but has, was the humility developed 2012 onwards or did you have a certain sense of humility when you were younger being the older brother Why did you answer that question? No, he was always an elder brother who always believed in saying things. And see, I come from a, we come from a very small town where uh, typically in India it is a very respectful relationship of an elder brother. Mm-hmm. So you look up to and you don't talk loud in front of him. You don't argue, you don't disagree and parents would not prefer that. Uh, the society will not prefer that. Our relatives will not like if I say him what's happening dude or they'll say excuse me, you know, that's mm-hmm. kind of a expression mm-hmm. but uh even after my marriage and uh, when you know we were two different families it was more of a very respectful but yeah we talk as brother and sister we were not this close to be honest i think i would say this that yes we have gone through a lot of storms lot of ups and downs but our relationship became very close yeah. and uh, there was a moment this is very funny incidents we actually stopped talking to each other and uh, very few people know this but we didn't talk to each other for almost a month too at least 8 9 months 8 9 months okay yeah 8 9 months we didn't talk he didn't talk actually he was angry he didn't talk for 8 months we didn't had any communication will you share what happened what was the trigger <clears throat> uh trigger was again the same thing it's it's like you know younger sister yeah and i was trying to balance everything and i was not able to balance him yeah. as a brother and as uh, an line. ir and sometimes i was taking him for granted because he's my brother mm. and that is the other side of life which it happens because he's my brother i can say to listen it's okay you 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 wait or you you don't do or you i'm i'm not going to take his name is not going to feel bad but i'll take care of very 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 carefully for other down lines right and i would give more attention to them and take him for granted we studied and we stayed together till the age of uh, 13 14 years only mm. yeah. after that we went to over different different lives in different places for the uh, boarding right and yeah. uh, then we met again we came uh, together and we started meeting again when we signed up so there was a gap of almost uh, 10 to 15 years in between wow. yes. so that gap was responsible for all these misunderstandings yeah. and the relationship uh, bias was there so i was feeling that the, it is the same shipra which i left 15 years back mm-hmm. and she was thinking the same brother which she left 15 years back but things change in 15 years so we were not able to adjust each other because i was a doctor i am a doctor and she was working in her job but we we were never never interacting so the best part of the business was it brought us together and the wild part was we didn't knew each other from past 15 years yeah. so that brought all the misunderstandings and uh, whatever happened mm-hmm. but the beautiful part of the business is that it brought us together as a family again the breakthrough for you i mean you're a doctor all of a sudden your sister your younger sister who is very expressive and emotional and excited about something she shares this with you this new this new business platform now you're a doctor you're successful you've chosen your path why the switch what was the click for you why why i didn't reply to her messages only for two days 
Si oh, two days. Message. I thought you were going to say two years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. For initially, when she wanted me to sign up as a Orzon, yeah. uh, she sent me a message. Send your details. I didn't open the message for two days. Right. Then she called. Why are you not sending the message? I said I have not seen it. I said what <laughs> the hell it is. And then she asked me to check the mail. In those days, we don't have internet in the phones, so we use the dongle and check the mail. But after that, when I went to see the business plan, I saw the amount of the money which you can make. I thought even if I can make the half. It's good. Yeah. So that was my click. Right. Even if I can make the half. Right. And in fact, he's missing the point where he called and he said, "Get your money out." And, you know, this is this is the most common thing people hear all the time. And then I sent him to meet people in Delhi. And when you met and saw the presentation and saw everything, right. Then he was like, "Okay, this makes sense." So he came back right. and he was very positive. And by the way, he did better than me in business in the start. What do you mean in the start? In, in the, the start, start, in the sense, <laughs> before I started making money productively, he you started making money more, much before than I did. So, and what was his key to to doing that? And what was it that you were missing? Why was he able to do I that? I was not having an upline in my city, while he had that best thing that the upline <laughs> was in his city, and he used to travel only on weekends for me. Right. So the rest of the five six days, the uplines used to be with him. Yeah. So I think. So, as as brother and sister, upline, downline, what would you have done differently in the last, let's say, ten years? Oh, okay. Less emotional. From him or from you? From me. No. Yeah, I I think uh, this is my strength, but it has also been my weakness. Right. So I think not being so good. Not being so good. Yeah, being sometimes more practical. Not being so good doesn't mean being bad. But being a little bit more practical to things rather mm. than being too involved and too emotional into things and mm. giving my heart out, I think sometimes we need to be practical. Sometimes mm. we need to take decisions or we need to do things more practically, more from the brain than to the heart. Mm. I'm a very hard person, mm. and I think that's where I think that's my takeaway. <laughs> O'Neill, can you come back with your question again more precisely? Yeah, what would you have done differently in the last ten years? In the last ten years. I should be. I I think I should be. A, I should be in more, a, more kind of dis, more discipline, more discipline and more some kind of. Discipline with what though? Yeah. Discipline with the some work ethics. Such as. Such as, I gave too much room, to many people, in the sense. Uh, to be honest, I gave too much room to the people. Too much freedom to everybody. Right. And uh, which has backfired me many times, because I was not kind of person who is control freak. So I believe in the freedom, but later on I have realized over a period of time that uh, I was mistaken between freedom and discipline. Mm. So that is the part I'm part I'm still working on, the discipline, not the controlling the things, but mm. the discipline on the work ethic part. So what does that look like if you're working on? Improving the discipline on the on the work ethic part. What does that look like on a daily basis? What do you do on a daily basis to address that? <laughs> It's very hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> that sense takes some time to think. Yeah. No, I think uh, what he means to say is, you know, while we are building from the day one, we have been bought up in this business. The way we have been bought up, and <clears> what we have <throat> learned is, be nice, be kind, and be good. And we have really followed it. <laughs> But everything is good. To a certain point, you know, the moment it, it too sweet becomes too tough to drink, right? Mm. So we we became too good with people. But like in okay, we are not talking about corporate. This business is not corporate. That's what we say. We have relationships. We have people. We have emotions. We handle it. So we should have been a little bit more practical, a little bit more strict, a little bit more disciplined in terms of okay. So if you this is not to be done, this is not to be done. Uh, it cannot be like. Okay, just see. You yeah, know. actually, she is saying the right. Yeah. yeah, I was like okay with everything mm. going right or wrong. I said I was like I will manage it, I will handle it, but that was the part I think I went wrong. Yeah. No means no. Right. That you was not you my put your foot down. Are you a parent, by the way? Are you? Yeah, yeah I've yeah. got two beautiful daughters. Yeah. 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 So this 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 is very much like being a parent uh, in terms of being an oh, upline. Yes, uh, very and putting very the foot well down, right? related. Yes. So I, I, I've met I've met your son, yes, uh, Prane. Yes, Pony was was his, his <laughs> childhood name. <laughs> yes, and uh, I mean the, the guy is an incredible gift 
And, and I want to know, you're a role model to many people around the world. I've been to many of your events and I've seen the impact that you've had. But what is that impact that you've seen on Prane over the last, what, how many years of your journey? Uh, 12 years now. Yeah. So what's the transformation like in him? So if you meet Prane, anyone, forget uh, people from QNET or our industry, but yeah. anybody who meets Prane, even a stranger, comes back always telling me, he is a very mature child and he is super talented and he is very mature and a lot of good things. And I as a mother say, yeah, okay, I don't want it to get, go to his head. But I know this and I don't want him to listen to this. That if one thing I can say that I'm proud of building is my son. Because I don't know how, but the journey he saw of us, because most of the time we were building from the house, going to association. He has not seen his mother for a very long time. Hmm. Uh, I was not there. I was working. So people think and people say that, you know, uh, oh my God, you know, you're not giving time. You should feel guilty about it. But look what it made my son. He is independent. He is disciplined. He is absolutely organized at the age of 15. He is knowledgeable. He is exploring. And I'm, I'm so proud of him because whatever he saw us doing mm -hmm. is that's what he's duplicating. Monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. So he, he's, he's an amazing child. And thanks to QNET because... It brought that to him. He became independent. From age of three, he's flying alone. Okay. Yeah. He travels. He's traveled the world. But still, he can do everything what I would expect a 30-year-old to do or talk mm -hmm. as a 15-year-old. Right. And currently, by the way, he was telling me that yesterday he was talking to him, me, everybody. He wants to open a, um, something online and start doing some business. And I was like, dude, wait. Let me come back and we discuss about it. You're 15. <laughs> he said, I can do. 17 year people are becoming millionaires. Absolutely. So for him, the word millionaire is not a big deal. For us, it was a very big deal. Yeah. For him, it is, it's okay. Yeah. I can. So, it's accessible nowadays. Yes. So sticking to family, where has he surprised you the most? Who? Owner? Uh, where has Neil surprised most? you the most? A lot of places, small, small <clears throat> incidents. He's not a person who would give a big expression, as I said earlier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But like recently, last year, my birthday, mm -hmm. um, uh, Pranay called him. And I don't know what kind of uh, understanding they had. But I got a gift, which is on my new iPhone 13. That time was launched. And I was like, who paid for it? Because my first question to Pranay, and he said, Onil did. And I was like, uh, what did you tell him? <laughs> and you will not believe. He said, 100 hours of work. For Pranay, when he comes to his place, okay, and a long list, you're going to do this, you're not going <laughs> to say this, you know, yeah, everything. And then he did it. I, I don't know whether he did, made him do or not. I'm sure no, he no, has No, he's it. going to pay me back with interest when he starts earning. Uh, obviously, yeah. he, has a plan, he has plans of becoming a millionaire. Brilliant. So, That's uh, your investment. So I, yeah. so, I have given an iPhone, so I will take a virtual phone back. <laughs> so, For you, yeah. Anil, where has Shipra surprised you the most? Uh... Shipra, obviously, I say now that she takes care of everybody in the family very well, mm. which uh, most of the time I am unable to do. And she surprises when she comes. She brings smile, happiness inside the house. Lots of uh, chatting happening in the house, and uh, everybody is happy. So the atmosphere changes. So she surprises every time. It's not one time. She surprises every time by changing the atmosphere around. Where, where she ever is in the house also, with the team also. So she changes, she changes the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, as she said that I'm kind of a bit uh, more serious mm -hmm. from outside. So many times I'm unable to change that feel. But she, she brings the change. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> so that's it, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you, O'Neill and Shipra, for putting it all on the table. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Not all the best. formal, but thank you, Trevor. We love you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's it. Take care, everybody.